<laughs> Welcome back to the round table. I'm Osric Vox, and Crossover Nexus may be over, but we still have a lot to explore. Recently, creator of OKKO Ian JQ went on Twitter and did an entire behind the scenes thread of Crossover Nexus, which in return addressed a lot of criticism towards the special. Criticism such as, this felt way too ambitious to be an 11 minute episode. What's the deal with Strike? And where was Ruby and Sapphire? Well, we have some explanations at the ready. So let's look at the history of Crossover Nexus. Now, the idea for the special originated from the Point Prep Academy arc. Higher ups felt that Point Prep Academy, a school for heroes, might feature some heroes from other Cartoon Network shows. So I imagine maybe Juniper Lee, maybe even Ben 10, but that didn't sit right with the team at OKKO. They don't want a crossover to be a small cameo and some Easter eggs. They want it to be the main event. And thus they incubated Crossover Nexus, which was originally a 22 minute special, bringing the characters together one by one. This takes us to our first alternate deleted scene. The original pitch had a different setting where characters were hypnotized by Red Pen. Red Pen just became known as Strike's Drone, or Pen as nicknamed by KO. The hypnotized heroes battled each other and originally this included Ruby and Sapphire. That's right, KO met Ruby. For those of you who don't know, Ruby's design is actually based off of KO's. So this would have been a great meta moment in the making. Also notice the red horns on Ruby. While this is a storyboard and the colors may not have been final, as there's also red arrows to indicate movement, it's possible in the original concept, being hypnotized by red pen meant having red horns on your head. Notice how Sapphire doesn't have red horns. So it's possible that KO already broke her out of her hypnosis. And judging by the storyboard, I'm assuming Sapphire made a remark on how Ruby and KO look alike, leading both of them to say, no way, as they make the exact same expression and gesture. Kale meets the characters in the same order he meets them in the final version, so first Garnet, then Ben, then Raven, and after battling Ruby and Sapphire, they reform into Garnet, which Rebecca Sugar did some under the table storyboards for. Ah, so good. Now another deleted scene shows the heroes maneuvering away from various strikes, and notice that it's not just Forearms, Kale, and Garnet, Forearms missing the Omni trick, so I'm assuming that already got zapped away, same with Garnet's visor, but one one from Infinity Train seemed to have a bigger cameo before being striked in midair. This would have been a great way to tease Infinity Train. Imagine all the kids at home going, wait, who's that? Then months and months later, when Infinity Train promotion begins, they will connect the dots in the commercials going, oh my god, that was the robot from that special. After it was storyboarded, the entire thing was pitched to a huge crowd at the studio. But unfortunately, they got word from higher ups that they would prefer this as an 11 minute episode. But they already had a full 22 minute special board at the ready. Now to save time and just work on the next episode in OKKO, they could have cut scenes, but they didn't want to do that, so they rebuilt the entire concept. And they changed the setting to truly be Cartoon Network City, so if you ask me, this may have been the better scenario. Red Pen was simplified from a villain to Strike's drone, and a new villain, Strike himself, was created by Parker Simmons. And here's where the fun, yet very time consuming part began for the OKKO team. With the setting set in stone, they had to go back through old promos to figure out what settings they wanted to include in the special from CN City. The most intense of the process was definitely all of the character cameos. They had to submit a legal request for each one. They also had to check down model sheets or official artwork for each of the characters in order for them to be depicted correctly. So that means Yumi, Robot Jones, and Alana. Some of the characters that made people go, wait, they still have the rights to those? I thought those shows were tax write-offs. Well, now you know. Indeed, paperwork had to be done. And here comes a fun fact. Class of 3000 and Secret Saturdays were left out of the special. Now, Class of 3000 especially, I did not expect to see it all. If you weren't aware, there was an entire lawsuit around that show. But if you want more information on that lawsuit, you can check out Retro Nemo's Top 10 WTF Music Cameos right here on the channel. Now, characters from Class of 3000 and Secret Saturdays Saturdays were in scenes, but those scenes ended up on the cutting room floor. A project this big is going to have some missed opportunities, but forget them. They also had a lot of fun recording the episode. Courtney Taylor, Johnny Maggio, Estelle, Tara Strong, our main four heroes, but then we also had talents like Pete Groundbart, Uncle Grandpa, and Michael Dorn as Red Strike. Now, as some of these talents have voiced older Cartoon characters, they decided, hey, let's recreate those too. So the boards of all the petrified characters and them being released at the end were revised to include Jay Jake, Alana, I Am Weasel, Schnitzel, and more. However, new complications got in the way. They needed to find official mouth charts for all those characters. They couldn't find weasels anywhere. Now, Cartner does have a paper archive, but it's located in a warehouse out of state that they had no access to. So they used the power of the internet. 
and travel back in time to Cartoon Network's ancient website. And wouldn't you know, back in the good old days, Cartoon Network actually posted the model sheets for their shows. God, I wish they still did that. Hey, crews of shows, make behind the scenes tumblers again. Update the Crewniverse tumbler. And through these model sheets, they were able to find Weasel's mouth chart. It's a crossover miracle. The newer artwork was much easier to get. After all, teams of the other shows work in the same building. And the Team Titans Go team over at Warner Brothers. So they were able to get the model sheets and signature sound effects. Authenticity. They also had fun putting together the backgrounds of the episode, including a bunch of references to old Cartoon Network blocks and promos. Although I don't believe a reference to SNES, Saturday Night Entertainment System, made it into the final cut. Which sucks because I loved that block. That block showed us Teen Titans 2003 for the first time. Iconic. The storyboard ended up clocking in at over 225 individual scenes and over 300 unique designs. Now the studio, Digital Emation, knocked this episode out of the park. And they had prior expertise and animating some of these characters. One of the animation directors used to work on Steve Universe, and they were thrilled to draw Garnet again. The music was created by Mint Potion TV, the usual composers for OKKO, OK and used the four-note new 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 motif throughout the episode, in addition to other Cartoon Network soundtracks throughout the ages. Now, Ian JQ did say he may return to this thread later, but for now, that's already a lot of information. And also, if you're wondering why the likes of Robot Boy, Hero 108, Johnny Test, Total Drama, any of those shows weren't referenced in the special, they're all imported shows. They're not Cartoon Network originals, which were the only ones they included. Although, I wonder where Mad falls in that legally. That's right, JQ. I didn't see that reference either. I guess reboots get no love around these parts, even if they are of the animated variety. But as always, what do you guys think? Are you disappointed we didn't get a longer episode or Ruby and Sapphire? If you could add one thing to this special, what would it be? Let us know in the comments below or tweet your thoughts to me at Thoughts or at Roundtable Vids. If you went up the Roundtable Girls, support us on Patreon. Get access to exclusive perks. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please throw it a like, share, and if you're new here, subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications to stay in the loop with all things Cartoon Network. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. Ostrich Vox, out. <laughs>